Well, it's the Isle of Man Sport and Dunning Club's big event of, uh, going on tonight in the Isle of Man. And a very special guest, Kevin Keegan, is joining us. Uh, no stranger, though, to the Isle of Man, I understand. You've been here a few times? Yeah, I've been here a few times, but not for a, a long while. Um, I, I, I've, I came years ago because I was thinking about living here with my family. Really? Um, when I left Spain, yeah. What, for tax, I think, was it? Or did you like the actual place? Well, the 21% tax was one of the things. And the weather, <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, with the, having the tropical weather here and things like that. <laughs> Uh, the, other, the other things was the schools, there were some quite good schools there, and um, I came again to play uh, in the Sparks charity um, years ago and actually ended up playing a football match at, I think it was Peel, uh, with people like Ian St John, um, Roger Hunt came, um, Emily News came, and lots of players, Willie Morgan played, and um, he just smashed our cabinet up over there. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> So, um, we're here at the bowl. Um, what do you think to the facilities, by the way? Yeah. Very, very good, just looking at it. Um, mm. I, I have refereed a match here as well. And it what? Apparently I sent two people off, yeah, a few years ago. I've just, I've just seen some pictures of it. <laughs> but yeah, the, I really like it because um, the turf, you know, it, it's, it's the new AstroTurf, which I, I think uh, allows so many people to come and play on pitches. I mean, it's all right having a nice grass field, but, you know, you can't keep it. You play, you play a couple of games in wet weather, no matter where you are, even if you're in the Premier League, they struggle to keep them great. But that's really good. You know, you can keep that going. You've got the floodlights. So I would think that gets maximum use. And, and the more people who use it, obviously, the better for the island. So very impressed. I wouldn't like to be sitting there when it rains, but it doesn't rain here anyway. <laughs> you got it. Now, I know HSBC are sponsoring this event tonight. Uh, you're talking to what? To what you've done in your life or you've got a particular angle on your stories um yeah just look, a little bit looking through my life you know tr what, what i try and do with with my uh is is, is with a powerpoint so that it's pictures so if someone comes like some ladies come they don't actually know a lot about football uh but their husbands drag them along so i try and put some pictures up to sort of show them <laughs> what it was like when i started playing obviously you know i started in in the old fourth division at scunthorpe but you were such a pin-up in the 70s you yeah, I, I sh I, yeah i show them that and some of my dodgy hairstyles and uh <laughs> What else do I show them? I, I take them right through my life, really, but, but uh, in a humorous way, hopefully. You, you know, it's not too serious. I mean, I, I just make the point that most people, when they see me, they don't say, oh, remember, you scored that great goal somewhere. They say, God, remember your dodgy haircut, or I had mine like that, and look what's happened to me. Or, it was a permanent brute aftershave. It's all coming back to me now. Yeah, oh, is it? Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it'll come back to me tonight. <laughs> but, yeah, things like that, you know, and obviously falling, I fell off a bike in Superstars. So... I, wherever I go, people will come up, God, I remember that, you fell off the bike in Superstars. And I always say to them, do you not remember any of my goals? No. no. Why no. is it people don't remember those things? I mean, likewise, looking a bit, bit of a Google search on you, that infamous uh, rant on the television, that always yeah, comes they, up they, now? Well, I sat with these Manchester United supporters on the way coming over and they were asking me if I'd love it if we beat them and things like that. <laughs> so, I, but I cover all that in my speech. So, you know, don't hide anything, all the good things, all the funny things. And when you look back, you know, uh, I mean, I, I started in the game at 16 and I actually retired at 33, which was quite early, but then I came back as a manager. So I, I had a, you know, it's completely different managing, obviously. Uh, you, you started off, uh, when, when I started playing, you know, the difference between the top paid player at the club and, and, and the worst paid player at Liverpool was about £15. And Tommy Smith got the best because he, he was a captain and he was a bully. And, um, you know, the rest of us fell in behind him. And um, at the end of the year in those days, he used to come and say, uh, are you going to sign a new contract? And you say, well, what are you offering us? We'll offer you another £3. And he'd say, I was expecting a bit more. And truthfully, in those days, the manager would say, well, OK, if you want any more, you can stay on your old contract and we'll keep your registration. So players had absolutely no power. Mm. Now we've got the opposite, where the players have got all the power and somewhere in the middle is the right place, you know, and uh, it's a great time to be a footballer now, obviously. It's not a bad time for being a commentator. P people after you, you yeah, do a bit of that? Yeah, and the Premier League is all over the world. I mean, uh, two weeks ago I was in Norway. They actually um, get live football and have done for, for 35 years now. They've actually had match of the day live even when in England, you know, you could only watch it at 10 o'clock at night. So Liverpool in particular have, have got a massive following over there. And of course now the younger generation, it's going to be Man United in Man City probably. But so I've been there, I've been to Malaysia uh, about eight weeks ago. Hard life. 
Yeah, but they, they actually get up at three o'clock in the morning and uh, to watch Premier League football because obviously the time difference, yeah. and they get massive audiences. And everywhere you look there, you'll see guys in Liverpool, you'll see Man United, but you'll see Newcastle. I was surprised, a lot of Newcastle fans over there. And so. they still remember you? Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I mean, if they don't. And the young kids, the dads told them about me, you know, and they just fetched these dodgy pictures with all dodgy haircuts and asked me to sign them. But yeah, I mean, when the fans are clubs, they tend to look at the history a bit. So even the kids who are only in the 20s, they know who I am, but they didn't see any of my goals or can't remember what I played like. But, you know, the fathers just pass it on. It's like a generation thing. Great. Well, have a good time tonight uh, talking to the public and maybe you want to move here. You know, still got open door policy for you anyway. Yeah, well, I'm very impressed, and you know, especially with the FA facilities and, and having your own power station across the road to tap into. Brilliant. Make the hair go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want that again. <laughs>